It's Saturday night, and I'm here at the Hard Rock Casino in Hollywood, Florida to get my money back. If you guys have been watching my latest vlogs, you have seen things haven't been going my way lately on the poker felt. I'm actually down over $17,000 in one week playing poker, my worst week ever since I started playing professionally back in 2018. I posted a video losing $5,000, and the day after that, I lost $3,500 playing 510 and 1025 No Limit. Well, after those rough couple sessions, I took two days off where I went to the gym, I went out for a nice steak dinner, I hung out with my dog, but the relaxing is over. I'm back here at the poker room. It's time to battle. It's time to crawl out of this downswing. We start things off raising eight six of spades and the hijack to $60. It folds to the straddle, who is an unknown player to me. It looks like a non-professional player where he makes the call. So we're heads up in position to nine, six, three, two clubs. I flop second pair. I'm expecting my opponent to check over to me, but he doesn't check. He leads out for over a pot size bet of $175. Immediately, I think to myself, he most likely has a 9x hand here, possibly ace 9, king 9. It is possible he could have a big straight draw or flush draw as well. I could fold my 6 where I could call. He's got around $1,200 left, so I decide to peel, see what happens here on the turn. The dealer puts out the fourth card, which is a 10. I'm expecting my opponent to check over to me, but he continues to bet now for the same sizing as he used on the flop, 175 bucks. We do improve to a gut shot straight draw now. We block him from having 7-8, given the fact that we have an 8 in our hand. I'm not really sure what to do in this situation. Should I call $175? Should I fold? I feel like once he bets the same sizing on the turn that he did on the flop, He's probably just capped to a one pair of hand, possibly ace nine, king nine. With that said, I think my options are either call and try to get there on the river, or I could turn my hand into a semi bluff and raise all in. He's got about $900 left. I'm sensing weakness from him, like he's got a strong hand, but not too strong of a hand. I can have all the big over pairs here. I have an eight in my hand, I could have seven, eight. I have a six in my hand, I could have pocket sixes. I decide to go for it here and put him in a tough spot with those one pair hands and I jam all in for his last $900. I'm hoping he's going to think I've got one of those big over pairs, two pairs set or straight and he'll fold his one pair hand. But unfortunately, he snap calls me. Oh my God. The downswing continues here. I semi bluff with a pair and a straight draw and get snap called. We run out the board one time and the river cards an eight. I make two pair and he shows ace nine for second pair top kicker. We get there on the river, hitting two pair. Wow, get it in bad and get lucky to win over a $2,000 pot. Well, that's not really how I wanted to win, but I'm not going to complain. Chips are being pushed in our direction. We played a little bit like a donkey and we got rewarded. I, uh, yeah. Not much to say about this one. The only positive thing about this hand is that my read was correct on the holding that he had. I put him on ace nine or king nine, but my read was wrong that he would maybe fold that hand whenever I jammed and he snap called me. Either way, we're up over a thousand dollars right off the bat. I switch seats to get the better viewpoint for the vlog and get dealt in pocket aces. Under the gun, I make it sixty dollars. Button player makes to call for sixty, and the straddle makes to call for sixty. We go three ways here in the middle of two players to a jack, deuce, five, two diamond board. On such a dry and unconnecting flop with the ace of diamonds, when it checks to me, I decide to trap and check over to the button who checks this one back. Turn card 10 of diamonds, we now have an over pair along with the nut flush draw, and now a pro player in the straddle leads out for a $125 bet. I could go two ways here, I could call, or maybe I could raise for value. Versus this particular player when he bets out here, I feel like he's going to have a jack x holding a lot of the time. Or maybe a hand like king queen with the king of diamonds. I don't think the straddle is ever going to three bet this flop. So I raised to $475 and immediately I get shoved on by the button. She three bet shoves for $1,300 total. A nasty spot here with pocket aces with the ace of diamonds. Straddle player thinks for a while and eventually shrug folds. 
and the action's back over on me. Now, I feel like I'm just always beat in this situation. Best case scenario, she has a hand like Jack-10 for top two pair, where I have a diamond out, I have an ace out, and a board pairing out. But given the fact that she didn't bet the flop, I don't think she has Jack-10 very often. I think she just has a flush here. Maybe she turned a set of 10s, possibly. Not sure exactly. I'm not really getting a great price here. I have to call around $800 more. But the thing is, this opponent gives me a lot of action. She's here to play for fun. I'm okay with giving her some action back. So I decide to put in the call, looking for a diamond. She asks me once or twice. I tell her it's up to her. She then tells me it's up to me. And I said, look, you asked. Let's just go one time. She says she's already there and shows king six of diamonds. So we've got to get there. Our only out now is a diamond on the river and we do not hit it. It's the six of hearts. We got lucky on the first hand, hitting two pair on the river, and now unlucky when aces are cracked against king six of diamonds, and we end up doubling up the button here in a rather large pot. I kind of lost a maximum in that hand, but flush versus aces with the ace of diamonds, you're just going to lose a decent amount of money. I get pocket aces again now, one orbit later, raised to $75. The big blind and action player makes the call, and now the straddle player, a rather tight Euro Pro, re-raises now to $425. Bucks. I look over at a stack, and it looks like he's got about $1,800 remaining, or $1,900. We've got aces, the best hand you can get pre-flop. Seems like an easy spot to put in a 4-bet, but the big blind player who likes to do some wild things is in the hand as well. I would like to play some pots with the big blind player in position, and also if I call here, maybe the big blind player will just shove his $1,000 in, and then the straddle can maybe reshove. So I decide to slow play and just call with aces. Unfortunately, the big blind player folds, and now we're heads up here with the straddle to a king 6-4 rainbow flop. Just from the little bit of time playing with this straddle player, I think when he squeezes here from the straddle, when the big blind action player calls, he's gonna have hands like pocket jacks plus, ace king, and ace queen suited. I feel like his range is gonna be very tight. So this flop is decent for us. Pocket kings do get there for a set. Ace king gets there for top pair, top kicker, but the king could be a scare card if he has pocket jacks or pocket queens. The under the gun player bets out $300, and given the fact that I just slow played preflop, I don't see any point in raising here. If he's got ace queen, I want to allow him to continue to bluff if he is bluffing. The turn card now is the nine of diamonds, bringing in a flush draw. I feel like this card is inconsequential. I don't think he's ever going to have pocket nines in this situation. I'm hoping my opponent bets, maybe an all in sizing, or maybe a sizing where I can jam, but unfortunately, he checks over to me. Given the fact that he checks here on this turn, I think two things are going on. One, he has showdown value with a lower pair to the board, like pocket queens or pocket jacks, or he's got a hand like ace-queen that he's completely given up on. I do think he would continue to bet a hand like ace-king or aces on the turn. So basically, if I put him on queens or jacks or ace-queen, he basically only has two outs to win or maybe drawing dead. So I don't really see a point in betting here on the turn. If I check back and get tricky and trappy, maybe it'll induce him to bluff the river. Maybe he'll hero call me lighter if I bet on the river. So I check back and unfortunately get a nasty fifth card. It's the queen of diamonds. This is not the card I was looking to see. This is the risk you take when slow playing pocket aces and not betting the turn. My opponent maybe got there on the river with pocket queens, which is one of the exact holdings I put him on. If he jams all in here, I'm going to be sick to my stomach and probably fold, but he checks over to me. So now I think there's no way I'm losing this hand. He either has ace king that he's pot controlling, he's got ace queen with second pair, or he's got pocket jacks. I decide to bet out here around one third size of the pot, $550, just hoping he'll hero call me with one pair. Back over on the under the gun player, he looks pretty frustrated, looks to me like he's never going to be raising in this situation. He looks like he's either thinking of calling or folding, and eventually he lets his cards go. Tells me later he had pocket jacks. I knew he had a strong hand. I probably should have just four bet jammed all in preflop, try to get it all in against the top of his range. But I got tricky. I wanted to play a pot with the big blind action player. Wanted to slow play aces a little bit. This is the risk you take. Sometimes you don't make the maximum. Not really playing my best early on in this session. 
but we are now up just a little bit so far, a couple hundred bucks. Next up now, I get dealt in pocket nines on the button. The same player who cracked my aces with king six of diamonds calls $25. I iso raise to $100 and she makes the call. So we're heads up here in position to ace, 10, eight, rainbow. On this particular flop with two over cards, I'm not gonna be betting. So when she checks to me, I check back and we get a great turn card of the nine of diamonds, turning a set for us. She checks over to me again, I now bet $125, and my opponent makes the snap call. Leading in here to the river, which is to five of spades. feel like she could have a missed draw here, or an ace X holding, or possibly two pair. So when she checks, I bet big, trying to go for value against her top pair or two pair holdings. I make it $525. She snap calls me. I show pocket nines for a set, and she shows eight nine for two pair. What a sick turn card for us two pair versus a set and after this hand i now have a forty five hundred dollar stack i'm in the game though for four thousand dollars i'm up around five hundred dollars so far on the day but don't you guys worry things are about to quickly heat up i end up playing a big pot here where under the gun plus one raises to 75 there's a cutoff call a straddle call and i look down at ace queen offsuit in the 25 dollars straddle i could go either way between calling 75 dollars or putting in a three bet squeeze ace queen's a pretty good hand i feel like it could be ahead of under the gun plus one's range there's some dead money in the pot so i bump it up here to 400 dollars only under the gun plus one initial razor makes to call. So I'm heads up here out of position to 10 deuce three, two hearts. I have the ace of hearts in my hand, two over cards of the board. I do have the range advantage on this board. I can have aces, kings, and queens. My opponent could have pocket tens here for a set. Don't think he's going to ever have any two pairs on this board. Maybe he could have a set of threes or deuces, but that's unlikely. I start out with a bet of $425, looking to continue on the turn if I pick up any equity, like a heart, maybe a king, a jack, obviously an ace or a queen, I'll continue as well. Under the gun plus one thinks for a while and eventually puts in the call for $425. Think it's very likely he could have a 10x hand or some pocket pairs, maybe a flush draw as well. This pot is brewing over $1,700 in the middle and the turn card improves us to top pair, top kicker. It's the queen of spades. This is exactly the kind of card we were looking for. I was going to continue on any card that would give me extra equity, and now I don't have to bluff anymore. We most likely have the best hand. It's possible we're running into pocket tens. think he would just always four bet pocket aces or kings preflop, so I feel very confident to continue to bet on this turn, and I make it 600 and $75. If under the gun plus one calls here, it'll leave them with around $1,500 left for us to shove, depending on what comes out here on the river. Given the fact that there's a queen and a 10 on this board, he may put me on a hand like ace king, which is a hand that I would three bet preflop, bet the flop with, and then now continue on the turn. Maybe he's thinking about hero calling me here with a 10, or maybe pocket nines or pocket eights. Maybe he has a flush draw as well or a spade draw. Once he makes the call for $675, I'm getting a little bit nervous here. Let's hold on the river. Things have not been going my way so far this week. Let's try to hold in a big pot, and it seems that we do when the river card's a brick. Both flush draws miss. Shouldn't complete any two pairs that he has. With $1,500 left in his stack, I'm gonna go for it. I jam all in. Once I go all in, he snap calls me. I feel like I could be beat here once he calls that fast. But when I show ace queen for top pair top kicker, he immediately taps the table. He doesn't show his cards. He pushes his chips out into the middle and folds. And just like that, we win over a $5,000 pot with one single pair. Three betting preflop, getting lucky on the turn, getting max value on the river. And now we have over an $8,400 stack. Poker makes up over 50% of my yearly income, so it does get a little bit worrisome when I go on a big downswing, losing $15,000, dollars $25,000 in a week. So it does feel good to come in today after losing $17,000 the day before and now being up $4,000. But there's a lot of poker left to play. Make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end of the video 
and see some wild hands to come up next. For the third time this session, I get dealt in aces. Under the gun plus one, I raised to $75. The action player who was on my right in the big blind the last time I had pocket aces has now moved to my left and he three bets me to 250 bucks. Action back over on me. Looks like he started the hand with around $2,000. I am definitely going to be four betting this time. Aces is the best hand you can get. Let's put more money in the pot. I make it $700 back over to him. I'm hoping he just jams all in here with any kind of pocket pair, but he decides to pretty quickly call $700. Now around $1,400 in the middle, pocket aces, and the flop comes down queen nine seven to diamonds. This is an interesting board. He can have all three sets available. He could have some two pairs and some big straight draw and flush draws. If I was much deeper with my opponent, I may consider checking here out of position for pot control, but in a four bet pot, only around $1,700 effective, I bet out $450. He looks back at his cards. He looks back at his chips, counts them out, looks over at me, and eventually gives his cards back to the dealer. We take this one down with pocket aces. After a few hours of playing, I finally get into my favorite vlogging seat, which is either seat number two or seat number seven, and we get dealt in Ace King. This is the vlog of playing hands a little bit unorthodox. There's an early position raise to 75, and I just call next to act with Ace King offsuit. There then is a cutoff re-raise to 215 bucks. The big blind code calls 215 bucks, and the initial raiser calls 215 as well. We slow played pre-flop, not three betting, and now there was a re-raise with two calls, a lot of dead money in the pot. Should we call and go four ways with aces, or should we put in a big back raise? raise. I back raise to $1,000, a very big bet for this game pre-flop. I think it's good to mix in some calls with very strong hands pre-flop as well. As you guys saw earlier, I just called pre-flop with aces in position, and now with ace-king, I just called a raise. I feel like it's good to mix in these hands sometimes so that you can be a little bit unpredictable. If I only three bet hands that are very strong, and then just call with my medium strength hands. By mixing in some calls with very strong hands pre-flop, it's gonna make me hopefully a little bit harder to play against, harder to range me whenever flops come out. Well, the action's back over on the cutoff who initially three bet the 215 bucks and he ends up letting his cards go, which is great. He had $4,000 in his stack. I was a little worried I ran into a monster against him. Big Blind eventually folds his cards, and then the initial Razor ends up letting his cards go as well. And just like that, we take down over $600 pre-flop with Ace King without even seeing a flop, which I would say is one of the best case scenarios. There's a player now at the table who sits down who is a very big action player. I haven't played with him in about two years. He's transitioned more towards PLO, but tonight he is back at the no limit tables. He races to 50 in middle position. I call on the button with 6-4 offsuit. Just trying to play some pots with him. Big blind and small blind call. We go four ways to queen 8-6 with two clubs. Action checks to me. I check back my second or bottom pair. And the turn card gives us two pair with the four of diamonds. Small blind checks, big blind checks, and now initial razor action player bets out $300 over the size of the pot. With bottom two pair here, I don't think we can really raise versus this sizing, especially on a board like this where there could be some straights and some cards that kill our action on the river. So I decided to just call $300 and we go heads up now to another six on the river giving us a full house things are going good for us this session we're making some hands making some plays everything is going well i'm hoping he bets but he slows down and checks i bet out very small trying to get value from an eight or ace high i make it 225 dollars he snap folds and we take this one down with the 6-4 offsuit on the button. Another big hand dealt in for us on the button, ace-king offsuit. The PLO action player now raises to $100. I three bet to $300, and he makes the call. Heads up here in position to king-6-4 to diamonds. He checks to me. I bet out 150, and he makes a quick call. Turn card seven of clubs. This could bring in some straights and some two pairs. 
but when he checks to me again and feel like there's definitely hands I can get value from, weaker King X hands, some pocket pairs that are unbelieving, and some flush draws as well, I throw out $625 now, and after thinking for about 45 seconds, my opponent makes the call. This pot is brewing. $2,100 in the middle. I put him on a weaker king or a flush draw. Got a faded diamond, and we do. It's the king of spades. I think it's one of the best cards in the deck. The front door flush draw misses, and if he's got a king, we got him out kicked here. We improved to trips with the best kicker. He checks over to me. I gotta figure out what sizing I wanna go here. It doesn't matter what I bet. If he has a flush draw or a missed straight draw, he's just gonna fold. So I'm gonna target those King X holdings he could have. King 10, King Jack, King Queen, and I go the size of the pot. $2,100 bet incoming from us. This is a very large bet from this game. The max buy-in is $2,500, so I'm basically betting as much money as you can buy in for. I'm hoping he calls but he folds. He must have had a flush draw or just some random two cards. We do end up winning another big pot here, which has made our stack now up to $12,000. We're in the game for a little over $4,000, winning some huge pots. Everything's going our way. We're now up heaps on the session with one other big hand to come. Again, we get into another big pot with the action player from the last couple hands. He raises to 100. I call in the cutoff with 6-5 of diamonds. Big blank calls. Three ways to top two pair for us. Deuce, 5-6, two hearts. We are just not missing today. Initial raiser bets out $100 into over a $300 pot. With top two pair on such a wet and connected board, I'm going to raise it up right away for value. Let's build this pot. I make it 325 bucks. To my surprise, the big blind code calls $325. And now the initial razor calls as well. So just like that, this pot is brewing over $1,200 in the middle. And the turn is the 10 of clubs. This doesn't improve any hand except for pocket 10s. All the flush draws and straight draws on the flop miss. When the action checks over to me, I definitely want to bet here. But I don't want to bet too big to scare away my opponents. Maybe the initial raiser has a hand like pocket queens or pocket jacks. Maybe the big blind has a flush draw. I do want them to call with those particular hands. So I decide to go $525, a little bit less than half the size of the pot. I do think looking back, I should be going a little bit bigger, maybe like 60 or 70% pot. I think I could still get a call with a $700 or even $800 bet. The big blind player who just cold called my $325 raise on the flop now calls $525 again. So I'm almost certain he has a big draw, like a straight draw and flush draw. Maybe he has a slow played kings or queens preflop, but that seems a little bit unlikely. Don't think he ever has pocket deuces or 3-4 for a straight. I'm fairly certain if he had a better hand, he would just jam all in. And now the initial raiser who bet the flop called my raise calls $525 again. $2,800 in the middle. I feel like we're going to have to fade the entire world here on the river. Both of my opponents probably have big flush draws or straight draws. And we do fade the flush draw. It's the seven of clubs. This does bring in 8-9 for a straight, so it's possible one of them could have 8-9 of hearts for a combo draw. Pocket 7s now beats us, but that seems very unlikely for them to have. Both of my opponents eventually check over to me. The big blind's got about $1,500 left. The initial razor and under the gun plus 1 has around $2,000 left. I could check back to pair now, given the fact that it is kind of hard to get called by worse hands. All the draws miss. If I bet, can they call me with worse hands? And then I think if they have top pair here, like 10x of hearts, or maybe a slow played over pair by the big blind, or maybe the initial razor just has pocket queens, I don't think he's going to fold for a big bet into this big pot. So I go for it all in into two players. I make like $5,500. Big blind snap folds, initial razor snap folds, and again, we win another monstrous pot, almost $3,000 being shipped our way. What an amazing session this has been so far. We had a terrible week, losing $17,000, missing every board, getting cooler, making bad plays, not picking up any big hands, and tonight, everything changed 
in the right direction where we hit so many flops. All of our big overpairs basically held up. Everything we did went the right way to end up cashing out for a massive profit, winning over $9,000 in around seven hours of play. I hope you guys enjoy this one. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see ya.